good highway system. Like the yeah. roads are super, super good. Um, yeah. Yeah, we'll talk about it a bit more. But I guess everybody's here, right? I guess we can get started, dive a little bit more into sure. the TikTok shop. Okay. Um, yeah. So we had some some things written down, but I guess we can just start off with everybody kind of introducing uh, introducing themselves, kind of what he has been up to, TikTok shop related, and just in his uh, entrepreneurial life, so everybody kind of knows who's on the stage, and then from there we can uh, do some deep dive. So I think Zane, you can just uh, kick it off. Uh, your background. Yeah, for sure. So my wife and I um, run a, a couple of e-commerce brands. She's in here right now, um, Alex. Um, her and I have been running on TikTok shops since last November on one brand, on uh, like a tech brand. It's kind of like travel um, product. So this is kind of right now our, is our Q4. It's trying to really heat up. Um, and we kind of just like have been focusing on that one brand, pretty much just one SKU. And revenue-wise, you're willing to share or? Yeah, sure. I mean, we, in March, we did about 200K. April, it slowed down. And that's not um surprising for us because like march was like spring break in the u.s april's kind of in between town and then may is starting to pick up a bit but i think we need to pivot kind of our strategy and we'll talk about that we're doing we were doing a lot of affiliates a lot of organic i think that's starting to go away in terms of it being like easy money we kind of have to you know switch more to paid ads and probably some live streams so we can get into that yeah cool thank you for that i guess most people already knew you in here of course but uh Thanks for the introduction. Then I will do one quickly on myself. So uh, yeah, name is Jasper. I've been into the digital marketing and e-commerce for the last, I would say, five years now. Got a little, a little bit big uh, off track the last, let's say, two years with crypto. But now, uh, since I guess last November, fully back to now TikTok Shop, uh, building Social Army, which is a community of for like TikTok Shop affiliates. Currently, almost at like a thousand uh, paying affiliates that are kind of in our community. So I have a good grasp of what these affiliates are looking for, working with brands and also structuring our first deals with brands now to kind of see how we can run that. So I guess that's a, a small introduction of myself as well. So then again, I think like Ashley, maybe you can take the next one. Next one. Cool, thanks Jasper. Uh, yeah, so a bit about me if you don't know. So yeah, I've been, gosh, social, paid social, digital marketing, gosh, about 20 odd years now. So yeah, show my age a little bit. Um, but yeah, obviously being on TikTok, doing TikTok for the last five years in one capacity or another. Also alongside that run a ad creative agency. So yeah, quite busy. But as you can imagine, TikTok shops kind of being a busy part of what we do at the moment. We are fortunate to back in 2022, we got better when the UK um, launched TikTok. So we've got a few brands on there, which was cool. And ever since then, it's kind of been just beating the drum and kind of just telling people, get on TikTok, TikTok shops going to come. And finally now it seems that people are starting to to recognize that so yeah we work with um about 16 brands at the moment we work with majority us a few in the uk and yeah we're just getting some great results from right now cool cool thank you and you also work with affiliates or you just only focus on the on the advertisement side of things uh yeah basically we do the full tiktok shop a to z so obviously affiliates um we obviously do the outreach we've got an in-house bot that we use and we've got a team of um affiliate managers who kind of do that then we run the ad side we do the organic so yeah literally the whole tiktok ecosystem okay cool yeah we will talk about the bot a little bit in the future i guess in the later in this, in this uh, twitter space and um, noah i'm not sure if you are connected i think so um, yeah maybe you can uh, be the next one Awesome. Well, good to be here. This is uh, very exciting for me, my first space ever. But kind of some background on me. I'm based in Austin, Texas. I think I've talked to a good amount of people in here before, so really good to reconnect. And pretty much what my agency does, Maverick Creative, is kind of similar to Ashley, probably a little bit different in kind of the offering, but helping brands grow on TikTok and TikTok shop now. So a big part of that is obviously influencers, affiliates. We also have like a, a bot that we use. Um, and then we make a lot of content with influencers that we manage. And then now I'm seeing a lot of clients, even especially our larger like TikTok shop clients are having random problems with getting bans. And this is especially common with supplement and like wellness companies. So we're doing a lot of like unban work now too, working on becoming official TikTok shop partners. So a lot of exciting things to do and talk about. Interesting. Yeah, I've seen some, like I talked to somebody at TikTok also, like I think like two, three weeks ago, first thing they mentioned was be careful with supplements. Like they will be, there will be, be some things going on. And I guess now also I've have some, seen some people on the affiliate side of things, but also the brands and they get some issues with the, the health products, right? But I think yeah, it needed yeah. to happen because it was out of out of control in my opinion. But Well, it's insane. And I'm sure you, the guys over at Breeze can talk a little bit more about that too. But 
I think a big part of it is like customer service at TikTok is so bad. They have like AI that are doing a lot of the things for them. And so the bans are really upsetting. Like we had a client doing like half a million a month on TikTok shop and then randomly getting their product taken down. And it was all just like some kind of small minute detail in the messaging. So it can be really frustrating. And I wish there were clear guidelines of, you know, what to expect there. But uh, unfortunately, it's pretty difficult to figure that all out. Yeah, it's crazy. Yeah, unless support, they can uh, for sure improve some things. But uh, hopefully there will be. But let's see. I know that yeah. the best experiences, I guess you guys have also some experience with, let's say, Facebook, with the other platform. So I don't have high hopes, but uh, let's see what they can do. Yeah. Yeah, I, that's why I like, that's what I think agencies can do really well now, especially like partnering with TikTok and doing all that, is they can kind of figure this stuff out for brands when it doesn't work. And like, I'm realizing TikTok themselves is so bad at doing it that there seems to be like a need for agencies. And I'm sure Ashley and others can talk about this too, but it's very, very, very frustrating for a product to go down randomly when it's doing so well. And then for you not to have a reason to even know why, like it's the same thing with an ad account or anything, but it's a very frustrating problem yeah, it to kills have. everything, right? It kills your yeah. momentum. I agree. Yeah. Okay. So then to kind of go on, on the supplement things, I think Alan, uh, you can take it on. Yeah. Yeah. What's up guys? Um, can you hear me? Okay. Sure, yeah. So can, yeah. <clears throat> pleasure to meet you. All right, sweet. Pleasure to meet you guys. Um, I'm Aaron. I think I know a handful of you guys. Um, I'm the founder of Breeze. Uh, we have a micros canvas and mushroom uh, product, and then we have a, also a mushroom-based uh, beverage as well. We launched on TikTok shop maybe four months ago. Ran out of product twice, which sucks. You don't want to run out of product. Uh, and we're scaling pretty aggressively um, through the platform. We're the, I think we're the number one beverage on TikTok shop now, and I'm working towards being a top 10 product uh, as quickly as you can. You know, playbook's the same as everyone, I'm sure. And I think that we should all just like really get to the sauce here so we can try to figure out how to refine each other and move forward. And guys, if you're not on TikTok shop, you really should be paying attention to what the fuck we're saying because this is not uh, nothing. This is the biggest seismic shift that's happened in e-commerce for a very long time. It doesn't apply necessarily to every brand and every product, but it does apply to the majority of them, especially in CPG and wellness. Um, so just like a, a top level, like we're, you know, the, the big thing is like getting a compliant making sure that you're following the rules. Like we work with Sam Habibi at Spotlight. Uh, we're also rolling out TikTok shop services at Lucid, my agency. Uh, Sam is, uh, Sam and Spotlight are TikTok shop partner agencies. So we have some direct support there. And then we have an ad rep as well. Although I don't think they're, they're very high level yet. Um, <clears throat> they helped us with the onboarding and compliance. Uh, we got taken down originally. We got them to get us re back up, although it was a shit show. And TikTok US is just like a total clusterfuck. Like they're, uh, it's different than the Chinese side. And they're very like sporadic and uh, crazy. And so I can share some about that as what I've learned so far. But our playbook has been uh, using an in-house bot to outreach to 2,000 people a day, and then uh, approving the ones that approving the sample requests that we think are the best, uh, rotating that into reaching out to them via messages through VAs, uh, eventually getting the Spark code, and then rotating the Spark code into an ads manager. We've now changed that. We got GMB Max activated. Uh, if you guys, uh, you probably are using that, but if you're not, you need to request it from your uh, from your players, and then you can use the Spark codes and authorize the creatives in your creative library, and then run them run them through GMB Max, which is essentially like a ASC campaign, like an AI uh, campaign for TikTok advertising. And you just set like a cost cap on it, uh, and it just rips, and that's led to the two biggest days of revenue we've had yet, as well as the highest lift from a ad channel and organic to our website. So. Anyway, that's a lot, but that's generally the playbook that we're running and I'm excited to learn today. Interesting. Interesting. Thank you for sharing that uh, information. I think most of the people in here, as you said, like they can learn a lot from what we're going to say here, what we're going to speak about. And uh, yeah, if you're not on TikTok shop, I think it's uh, something to at least look at or start with. Like, I know also a lot of guys that I know they're in, in Europe, so they cannot start yet. But once it comes to there, I guess there's also a whole big new inflow of brands coming to the, to the platform. But excited for that as well. Um, I can think Sam, you can be uh, up next. Cool. What's up, guys? I've spoken to a lot of you in the DM, so it's a pleasure to connect. Um, but currently building a brand and using TikTok Shop heavily, it's it's been a great platform for us. It's you know I totally agree. There's a lot of obstacles in the way, and I kind of view that as an opportunity because I always say, Sam, we can't hear you if you're oh. speaking. <clears throat> We can hear you. I'm not sure what happened. Yeah, I was able. I was able to hear Sam. I couldn't hear Noah earlier, which was strange. But um, okay, so you guys could, can't hear me. I can hear. You. Yes, I could also hear Noah. So okay, I'm not sure. Okay, cool. Yeah. So basically, just saying that 
you know, I view it as an opportunity. Google ads in the early days, it was such a pain in the ass. Facebook ads, a huge pain in the ass. And TikTok shop is really no different, but a lot of people are going to stop at those roadblocks. So everyone that's in this space right now is early. And I think that it's just really, really special time for us. And so, like I said, we're scaling a brand. We're working with a couple brands on the low, helping them scale on TikTok shop. And actually, we have gone kind of a different method than the mass outreach, uh, and it's working pretty well for us. So we can definitely get into the details and talk about that. But excited to connect with everyone and get, look forward to getting to it. Yeah, thank you for being on, for sure. No, again, like uh, I think the shop, it's, uh, it's big. And as you said, like the roadblocks, I think there are only opportunities uh, for people like us. So very interesting. Spencer, you can uh, go next. What's going on, guys? Um, I run a brand called Tails. We launched our product. We basically just have one ski right now, which is a uh, card deck with 150 questions to get to know your loved ones better. We launched that uh, just over a year ago. Um, scaled it up pretty quick on Facebook and Instagram ads and then uh, and then launched on TikTok shop in mid-February um, and, and saw traction pretty immediately, uh, which was fantastic for profitability. Um, and yeah, we we're big fans of TikTok shop over here. We are um, trying to figure out how we expand uh, to YouTube and um, Instagram reels and kind of uh, recreate what we've done on TikTok as well. But um, yeah, it's been fun. Excited to learn more. Good to have you as well, man. Good to have you. Like, interesting. I think I've seen your product coming around uh, quite a little bit. It's an interesting one. So uh, yeah. good job on that. Thank you. It's a creative one, right? Okay, Rocco, you can uh, be the last one to kind of introduce yourself to the rest and then we can dive into the, the sauce here. Cool. Hey guys, it won't take up too much time here, but um, yeah, excited to be on this space with you guys. Um, you know, we sell a wrap dress. It's a beach dress um, cover up that we sell um, on fa mainly Facebook ads right now. We actually, it's funny, I have the TikTok uh, background on my uh, my profile picture, but mainly selling on Facebook right now. And, um, you know, because our product actually got taken off a of TikTok shop for about 45 days. So we lost really all of the momentum there. But um, yeah, I'm looking forward to um, learning from you guys on, um, you know, the best strategies. You know, right now, Zane hooked me up with a bot that is, um, you know, sending out like 3000 messages to affiliates per day. Um, which I, you know, we, we're sending out a lot of product. It's going to be really helpful and I'm excited to see those posts come in, but I'm really excited to, um, just, I, I really want to just have some owned creators. Um, cause, uh, you know, I think if we have some owned creators, we can kind of manage the content a bit better and, um, yeah, find some, um, find some more success that way. And yeah, just in general, more TikTok shop strategies to, uh, to help us grow. And again, we're in the apparel space, you know, selling a, a beach, beach dress and, uh, yeah, would love to connect with you guys on the side. Anyone wants to send me a DM, would be happy to connect with you guys. For sure. Thank you. Yeah, so I think that's kind of the first topic we can dive into immediately. Is this, as you said, like Rocco, I think Zane, we also talked about this one, like getting affiliates really connected with your brand, right? So not only just getting a product sent out, but really connecting them to your brand and having them for you, working for you longer term. Uh, maybe Zane or somebody else can kind of, go into how, they, how they're doing this and what are kind of the best practices to at least keep affiliates more closely to your brand instead of just sending them the product and then making let's say one video uh, having them in there or like making multiple videos for retainer or maybe even um, yeah, just being there for longer longer term yeah this is like a common complaint i hear from other brand owners as well it's like if you get an affiliate off of the affiliate center it's a commission only model they're probably only going to post one video we've even had someone in a tweet about it where they posted a video and got a hundred K sales, like 20% commissions, so like 20 K that they made. And then they just never posted again, even after we like offered bonuses, trying to incentivize them to post. And they're posting like new products, getting like a thousand views on those products and like getting no sales. But like, I think it just goes to show that like, you know, as entrepreneurs, we have a shiny object syndrome. So do these affiliates, they can either post your product again, or they have like a hundred brands in their messages that want to give them a free product. They're like, Oh, okay. I can go get a free product and post another, uh, post a video plus get a free product. So I think you really have to be smart on how you engage those creators. Um, right now there's so many affiliates piling onto the platform now that it's moved from 5k minimum to 1k minimum so it's like you can always find new affiliates we've sent out now to a thousand affiliates 
So like, and there's like 900K on the platform. So there's always more that we could reach out to, but it's like, you've already sent the product. You've already paid the cogs for it. Um, if it's a good affiliate, like really trying to squeeze more out of them, whether that be just like encouraging them, like giving them compliments, being like, oh, wow, that was a great video. Like, we really think that you could, could take off if you post a couple more and kind of our message that we send them when they get the product, we tell them like, Hey, some of our top affiliates, like they, they really took off after like two or three videos. Like it helps, you know, like the algo can kind of figure out who to target, et cetera, et cetera. And then if you have someone crush it, like, like consider giving them like some kind of retainer or flat fee per video so that you can really get them to keep posting instead of moving to the next brand. Um, and if someone has like a really good strategy on that or has had success on that, um, feel free to chime in. Yeah, I mean, I, I just say like at the top level, I'm assuming I'm coming through good. Um, I, I think at the top level, like, you know, like the perspective of like squeezing affiliates versus like creating collaborative relationships for ongoing benefit to each other is like an important perspective switch that we all should have as like marketers. I, like, you know, it's, this is not like direct response to advertising where we're like trying to milk every fucking creative for the lowest possible CAC at the high. Like there, there's a, like th where this game goes, like, I think the confusing part is like at the beginning of this, it's a lot of hackery in order to get a lot of affiliates in your network making content. But as soon as you have those affiliates, like eventually the affiliate networks run out and it's all going to be about how strong of relationships did you create with these creators to then make ongoing content to make them as much money as we can possibly make them like focus on them and servicing and value to them. And so like where, the way I'm perceiving it now is like, we're kind of doing the cast wide net thing now, which is like, Hey, let's reach out to as many people as possible. Like we're in discovery mode. The affiliates are in discovery mode. We're all trying to figure out who uh, is the best uh, partners and blah, blah, blah to, to work together. But like, as we kind of find the winners, we're trying to start to nurture those relationships, migrate them over to either a discord or to a Slack. Um, and we find that like actually texting them is probably the fastest way to get them because that usually you get the phone numbers. So we find that texting them is usually the fastest way to actually get in contact with them on a, on a more regular basis. And then uh, incentivizing them to, to have like an, an ongoing relationship with us. I, I think where this game goes ultimately, like pretty soon there's gonna be talent management agencies just like they have in China where they are uh, in charge and have contracts with all of the top affiliates. And then they're going to take an additional fee on top of the affiliates fee. So I think there's an opportunity now to kind of curate deep and personal relationships with top affiliates and have them make ongoing content. So that's the direction we're, we're heading. I, and I, I don't think it's like a, it's like, it's not like an and or uh, it's, it, or it's, it's not like, it's not like an or situation where you have to do one or the other. It's, I, I think it's an and like cast a wide net, collect affiliates, have them make content, as soon as you find the winners, start taking them seriously and start building real authentic relationships and try to get them off of TikTok into like a more uh, siloed conversation channel, channel so that way you can have a more building conversation. I also, I'm curious your guys' perspective, but like, you know, we were, we were at 15% commission and then we dropped it to 12 and a half. And I think we're way too fucking low. Like I'm seeing brands coming at like 20, 30%. And it seems like a lot of the top products are like 20 to 30% pretty consistently. So I'm curious where you guys are at with this and if it's like, if it's already becoming a must or if it's really kind of product specific. Yeah, based on, yeah, I think you made some good points there, Aaron. And I was just going to follow up in terms of that, in terms of like creating that network of creators, definitely like a must for all brands to be doing right now. Because obviously we all know, obviously YouTube's about to well, already launch in there, kind of like competitor, you know, Meta's going to do the same as well. So by being able to be first kind of to be able to do this in terms of getting these Yes, TikTok's great now, but obviously when Meta does come out, if you've got your affiliates ready to kind of just launch on there as well, I think it's kind of a no-brainer from that perspective as well, just to kind of be able to attack all channels as well from that side of things. And to your question in terms of the, the commission, I think you guys are fine in terms of obviously lowering because obviously you've got that kind of like clout now in terms of obviously doing good sales and all you've got obviously good kind of traction. Because obviously like when we start with brands, obviously, yeah, we do start with some brands like 35% and sometimes 25%, sometimes like that lines of that. But then we always look to drop it later on. So yeah, I think you're on the right line in terms of obviously starting a bit higher and then always dropping it because if you've got that traction, I think you're, you're in a better place than others for sure. Yeah, I would say I've seen a lot of people asking questions about what's like the best price or like performance offer to give creators. I would say it definitely depends on the price of the product that you're selling. Like obviously, it's going to be different if it's a $30 product versus a $60 product. And I've also seen creators that only look to sell more expensive things in general. Like they're only trying to sell like microphones or, you know, like computer accessories or desk chairs. So it can be a little bit of a competition there. And I don't think it's that bad yet. And it probably will get worse down the line. Also, I really liked what Zane said before. I would definitely recommend 
all all you guys that are building your own brands to do this, if you find creators that are really, really exceptionally good, like Zane said, one creator that made a hundred thousand in revenue. If you find somebody like that, I would definitely recommend some kind of contract, some kind of like retainer basis pretty immediately, because if you have a relationship with them, then you're much more likely to stick around with them. And some of them aren't necessarily thinking long-term. Some of them are just posting videos for fun. And so if you want to build that kind of like more business relationship, I definitely recommend getting it started quicker. Yeah, I agree. Well, just kind of flexing on that real quick there, like, uh, just to expand on that, like, you know, there's like, there's one, you need to create a wide net of like, so how we're doing it and how I'm seeing it is like, we're creating a wide net of people on a regular basis that are coming in, circulating in, finding the top creators, creating better situations for them to kind of keep creating content. <clears throat> then what we're doing also is we're getting usage rights from the top performing ads uh, and then rotating those over to Facebook and Instagram. I think this is like such an obvious play that I don't know why the majority of people aren't doing this, but like if you guys aren't doing this, I would highly, highly, highly recommend you do this. Like if you validate the ad works on TikTok, like it's definitely going to work on Facebook and Instagram. Uh, so like uh, I would, I would get the usage and we're paying somewhere like one, you know, 50 to $250 per video to get the usage rights. But then to your point, Noah, we like get kind of what you were saying, Zane. And this is what I've been hearing from some like insiders as well in the community is like, if you can get these guys to, okay, hey, you guys make videos on it, that's great. Uh, can we also sign you up for a retainer for a thousand, fifteen hundred bucks a month to make a video a day and post it to our brand channel? And then you can authorize your brand uh, in the TikTok shop portal, and then you can run its videos as affiliate videos and keep the commission. So you're essentially getting the benefit of them making more videos uh, more consistently without having to pay the commission on it. So that's a 15% rebate, which is fucking nuts. So like, that's the direction we're heading as well. I don't know if that's going to work long term because I think like, this is the thing, guys. It's like, is the, is the game trying to hack the system or to be first to do it better than anyone or a first wave to do it better than anyone? You know what I mean? Like, I think that the whole reason social commerce is going to work at scale is because it's like the first time that like this shit's actually uh equanim like equal for other people like it's equitable for other players like you know like this whole like oh influencers charge ten thousand dollars and or two thousand dollars or they do it for free product it's, it's never really been fair this is the first time it's actually been fair so i think that there's opportunity to create high leverage moments like putting people on retainer but at the same time like if there's long-term strategies to work with high influence creators and pay them fairly and succeed at scale i'm also super interested in just like trying to figure that out first because i think that that I don't think the gray hat strategies ultimately are what's going to win this game. I think it's going to be whoever figures out how to play this very clean and very in alignment with the big platforms uh, first. So that's kind of what I'm looking at. I agree. No, 100%. So I think also one thing that's kind of interesting, I'm not sure if you guys are doing it, but having these kind of bonuses, right? So com like not competitions, but leaderboards, giving your top affiliate certain bonuses. I've seen one guy in our community, he's doing like $750,000 in, in GMV. He got like one brand that was giving him a Rolex if he hit, I think like $150,000 for his brand. And he was grinding like crazy for this, this present of course. So these things, I'm not sure if anybody in, in here is, is doing uh, bonus structures or kind of competitions between uh, their affiliates. If anybody is, I would be interested to kind of hear how you're structuring it. And if you see it is working, because I guess incentivizing kind of in a gamified way, at least what I've learned from my experience in the, in the past five years is, I think gamifying something like this can work very well, especially because most of these affiliates are not business people. They are most of the time, as far as I've, I've learned, it's just normal people. And doing these type of competitions can really motivate them a lot. I'm not sure if somebody is, is doing it in here. Where are you communicating this to them? Like, are you doing this in a private channel or through TikTok? Yeah, so we have, of course, our community. So we, have, we run a community for affiliates. So we have like 700. Uh, something affiliates currently in our community being active so we can do it in there we host multiple brands in there so that's easier for us um, but the competitions we haven't done yet so this is something we're kind of looking at we're now structuring it would love to hear I'm not sure saying if you already did something like this or Aaron, Aaron if you did it we haven't done it but that's like the direction we're heading it's just like trying to pull people together like you know Sam's doing that for spotlight right now it's very similar to you Jasper is like building a community around creators then just you know uh, like putting them on different brands over time so I think it's super smart from an agency perspective but uh, we're not doing it yet but I, I would like to do it I think it's all going to be about this it's like how strong of relationships can you make with these creators and and how can you incentivize them? 100%. I'm curious also if anyone's done that but if, if, if they haven't 
have you guys, Jasper, have you worked with any like really top tier affiliates? And, yeah, like, yeah. Do they operate or Zane? Have you worked with, have they, do they work differently or is it like, do they treat, I mean, some of these guys are making fucking 200K a month. I have, like, um, uh, are, I think we this... have like four people that have done uh, around 750 or like a million mark and then a few like then about 500K. Um, these guys are, as I said, like normal people. I think Noah, you made a tweet on this as well. It's very interesting to see. Like, I think guess you made it about how they should look like if they should look nice. The, all these people are very, very normal, normal people. Uh, they treat it different because, of course, they get crazy amount of brand deals. So, uh, as a brand coming in there, it is way different. They all ask retainers upfront. They said oh, at least four fifty dollars for a video if you want to work together. Uh, but they also still choose a lot of their own products. So this is something I see also a lot. Uh, you have exponential growth in TikTok. So if you come like Aaron, I'm not sure how, how close you are to being in the top 10 of, of top brands on Calidata or anything. But if you come and be at these spots, you will get this exponential growth from other creators searching for ni- next viral products. If you get those, because all these people that are doing very well, they still look at other people making viral videos and copying them, right? So I guess it is an exponential game and it is also a game of just being in the, in the top 1% will boost everything like exponential yeah i have to agree a lot with jasper there i've seen with the bigger creators that we work with um the ones that are like some of them are like influencer affiliate combos so they're they have really big personal like channels and a lot of followers and then they're also doing a bunch on affiliate just because they're trying to make like more money as opposed to just like making like whatever entertaining content that they make and what's crazy is they're getting a ton of inbound a lot of it is looking like it's from bots it's really bad uh, really bad emails that they're getting sent to them. Some of them I had them like put my email in and I'm getting these emails from like all these different like horrible like outbound emails from from brands. So I would say the one of the things that would be really high ROI here is just make your like outbound emails that you're sending or messages that you're sending look really professional, make them actually personalized because if you're playing like an outbound game, it's really, really hard to succeed there. It, it'll work way better if, well, number one, if you can just make it really personal, you know, one at a time. But otherwise, if you are doing like a massive, like 3,000, whatever, 3,000 messages a day, like definitely try to make it as professional and personal as possible. Yeah, I agree. Great feedback note. Hey, uh, Sam, go ahead and request speaker so that way you can uh, join uh, in Sasper if you can approve him. He knows uh, a lot of shit that he, I'm sure he'll want to share about. Yeah. Um, but just oh, real quick, like, uh, so like most of us, most of us are doing this like widespread cast the net, send 3,000 messages. Is anyone just like focusing on like super high intent quality influencers, like kind of following this thread? Is like, I mean, like one of my next phases is like literally to have someone just go through Kalo uh, data and, and uh, Fat Moss and just like look at the top 100 affiliates and try to create unique one on one relationships with all of them. Like, is anyone doing that directly or just focusing on power players or just focusing on high intent or is everyone doing, you know, wide net activity? Um- I'll, I'll go first on that. A bit of both, I would say. And obviously, it depends. Obviously, from age side, it depends brand to brand in terms of what their kind of requirements are. We've obviously been fortunate that we have got um, some creators who obviously are good GMV. So we've obviously got that network already, which is good. Simmons, probably, I guess, some of the other agency guys in here as well. But yeah, I think it definitely, you do need both sides in terms of that mass numbers, so obviously, to find them new affiliates. Because again, some affiliates who obviously have got no data could all of a sudden just be like, do you know I mean go viral straight away so it's kind of obviously having that in play but then also knowing that you can rely on some creators and not having to do the outreach too so yeah i think it's definitely a bit of both but what you've seen work from the best side i think especially now because even outreach is getting just so much more diluted obviously with more brands more bots so it's obviously getting a lot harder so that's why i think definitely the play is to get people off that platform build them relations like we keep mentioning and that's definitely the way forward for sure yeah, and the thing which is I think a little bit hard here is like let's say you have, are one of these top affiliates, at least from my perspective as as I see it, they get so many inbound from brands, right? Uh, let's say on your brand, you you reach out to one of these guys, they have already four or five, maybe ten, twenty brand uh, partnerships running. They don't want to be in contact on twenty different uh, places. Uh, Sam, I think you're in. You have a background noise. Mute yourself, yeah, perfect. Um, you get a lot of in- inbound of all these brands and you are in contact with all these brands on different platforms. Let's say they take you to Slack, the other one takes you to WhatsApp, the other ones take you to, I don't know, Telegram. It is crazy to manage this. So that's also why I think agency work will, like same as you were saying, I guess, Aaron, is it will become more and more interesting and more and more needed because there's just too much kind of uh, de- delegation, I guess, of, of contact with all these people just everywhere, like on TikTok, keeping contact. It's not really 
uh, feasible, but having contact outside of TikTok for the affiliates is very difficult to kind of manage. So I think eventually, eventually there will be aura space where the top brands, of course, they have their own affiliates. But on the other side, you will have these bigger agencies, uh, communities, platforms where uh, these creators will be managed. And I guess, like on what you're saying, like having some affiliate uh, or some commission on top of it, uh, I guess where it is moving. I think you said China, they already have this, right? Totally. And that, that's exactly what's going to happen, dude. Like, it, it's like Hollywood, you know what I mean? Like, uh, like essentially these become the celebrities and the celebrities have people that prevent us brands from talking to them directly. And we have to go through their people and they take a cut for the, for the pie. Um, Sam, if you can hear me, talk, go ahead and riff on this. Cause Sam was telling me a lot about this, but I don't know if your connection's good. If not, I'll talk about yeah. it. Yeah. Can you guys hear me? Yeah. Go ahead. Hey, yeah. I, I mean, I just joined in the conversation, but um, kind of the reason I got into this space was, you know, I was looking at the influencer marketing space and you kind of see like all these influencers charging brands thousands of dollars. And a lot of it is because of that middleman agency um, that's like charging a lot of money. And on the brand side, uh, if you guys have ever done any influencer marketing work, you know that attribution was really difficult back in the day. And uh, TikTok shop is kind of changing that game right now where it's kind of like democratizing. The well, Sam, tell us about. Yeah. Tell us about like the Chinese agencies and the Chinese talent management agencies and how you think that that's going to migrate over here. Oh, yeah. So I was talking to some of the ones that um, are basically really big in China and the ones in the UK, too. Uh, they were kind of telling me it became a race to the bottom on the agency side for the um, influencers uh, where they were kind of like starting to charge in the beginning, like 20 percent commission from all of their um, basically like basically they were charging a commission on top of their commission. Um, to sign them onto their agency, but it kind of became a race to the bottom. And now none of them kind of charge anything um, for the creators. Um, so that was like a big thing that they were talking about. And um, I don't know if there was anything specific. I just joined the call. So um, don't want to kind of go in yeah. circles. Yeah, but that was like a no, big thing that they were talking about. I was just kind of... I was just kind of riffing on the fact that like over time and maybe hit mute and you're not talking. Uh, I was just saying that like over time that like these creators are going to be harder and harder to access, oh. especially the top ones. And in that process, yeah, they're going to be, I mean, through these. we're kind of seeing that right now. Like a lot of times when I reach out to these creators to like ask them to like do some more work with us or kind of like quote unquote, like join us. Uh, we do hear that they're saying like, Oh, I'm already like signed to this agency or um, I'm kind of like already working with someone else. And I think one thing from the, if you think about it from the psychology of the creators, um, if as an agency, you kind of do them a solid favor, a lot of times they kind of stick with you. Uh, for example, there was one that I was talking to uh, who was saying they had like twenty, thirty thousand dollars $30,000 locked in on TikTok and they couldn't get a, a hold of anyone on the TikTok team. And this agency kind of helped them get in touch with someone at TikTok and opened up their funds. And they were like, even if they don't give me the best deals, like I'm kind of like loyal to them and I kind of want to stay with them. Uh, so fostering those relationships with those creators right now is probably going to be like the most beneficial thing uh, in the long run, uh, because there's going to there's always going to be a like the supply and demand is not there's no equilibrium. There's always going to be a scarcity on the creator side where there's going to be way more brands who want to talk to creators and work with those creators and um, enough supply of those creators. Yeah, I agree there. I agree 100%. And also, I'm currently in Thailand, right? And here you see, like, in all these Asian countries, you see kind of where TikTok shop is moving. Like, same as you were talking about, Aaron, and Sam is about where China is. You literally see kind of one year ahead of where uh, USA currently is, like, the things they're implementing, the thing, things, how they're using uh, TikTok shop. Literally, they're do, running advertisement just as Amazon, like, use it as a normal platform. Um, and also, indeed, like, everybody is, is connected to the platform to buy here. And the live streams are big. So you see it now. I guess it's also the next topic we're kind of dive into. It's just live streaming and where how hard TikTok is pushing is current in. I think it's kind of just forcing it on people. It's not really something that came uh, naturally to USA. They're just forcing it now on people. But it is working. It's interesting. I'm not sure, Aaron, if you're using live streams currently for your brand or anybody else here. But We just started doing it. We just started doing it a little bit. Like we've had like three live streams, and then I had a couple of I had one I have a couple creators that do it more regularly. But like that's where I'm leaning in super head. Like like the big things that we're doing now is like we're consistently doing the outreach and bringing people in. We're starting to curate our relationships with creators to make them better and stronger, and give them feedback off channels so that way we can get better videos. And then uh, the next phase is like we're gonna put retain we're gonna put uh, creators on hourly retainers to go live. 
then they're going to get a flat base just to go live and then they'll get their commission on top of that. So we haven't like fully wrote that out yet, but that's the next phase. And I'm seeing the top brands are fucking doing everybody 20, 30 live streams a month. Yeah. Yeah. It's, a good, it's yeah. going crazy. Yeah. Yeah. Zane had a tweet about it that he put a screenshot of the incentive that they have. And um, I was talking to them. I don't think it's offered to like every single brand, uh, but I know like in, from all the conversations I've had internally with TikTok, they love live like that is kind of like their little baby and they they like are the biggest believers in it because uh if you look at um like tiktok shop in china uh it's called i think i don't know how to uh pronounce it but it's called doyen or something um for them it's entirely live shopping so they don't even have these like affiliate videos it's all just from live and tiktok is really pushing that vision here in the u.s and that's why they're uh giving so many incentives uh for people to like start going live and it's definitely something we want to like get into like earlier than later, but um, I'm not like the, I, I don't know if the U.S. consumers love it as much as TikTok wants them to love it, but I think in the long long run, it's probably better to start learning it now that it's early and TikTok's even these incentives. Which accounts are are like crushing lives right now? I don't know. Like I, that seems like so foreign to me. Like what? How to actually even approach that? Like who's who's doing this well? I have so one a couple. Guy in the community. He did like 500 grand on lives only. Um, yeah, he was, he sent me his, his videos. Like I can send them through to you saying he's just very easily showing the product, talking about the benefits. Just literally he did the collagen one he made. I think 40 color data is by the way, very off on live stream. So don't get fooled by that. But um, yeah, I think like 40 grand he did in one hour. Like it was his craziest life, but he just kind of going over the, the benefits, right? Vitamin C, these are the benefits, like a very easy setup but it worked like crazy. I and mean, he knew what he was doing, but it looks very interesting. He's just Couple repeating himself over that. and over again. Sorry, Zane, go ahead. No, uh, good, a good question on that in terms of who's doing the best lives. I think Kalo data is a little bit off, but they're still kind of useful uh, because like, as long as the product price doesn't fluctuate too much, because they don't really know what product is being sold. They just know the order count. So if they have a, a bundle in there, that's like $200. It's going to overestimate what the, what the revenue is, but just a couple points I wanted to add to before we move on too much. In terms of keeping affiliates engaged, even like I was at the Seller Central event and like even TikTok is kind of struggling with this. They have the TikTok Shop Ignite program where they have like these select creators. And if you have a really good relationship with your AM, you might be able to get the list. It's pretty highly guarded, but you won't even be able to tell from the affiliate center. But I think there's like 200 or something of these like really, really top creators. They get free samples. Like the sample will just show up as a regular order on the brand, but they're getting it for free. They're getting an additional commission on top of whatever commission the brand's giving. So like, say you're doing 20%, they might be getting five or 10% on top just to keep them engaged. They're getting all these bonuses because they're clearly like top performers. Now you have platforms like YouTube coming out with affiliate or at least coming out with like a YouTube shop and like eventually these platforms are gonna have affiliate. So then they're gonna be competing to keep them on TikTok versus Instagram versus YouTube. So it's like a big problem that they're trying to get on top of now. So like Aaron was saying, if you build those relationships now, you'll be in a way better place than like when you have, you know, a couple thousand extremely good creators and they're split between platforms and brands. Um, and kind of what Sam was saying in terms of them pushing live stream, like I was talking to my AM um, a couple weeks ago and she was saying that they're just doing an algorithm push the same way as when TikTok shop went live and everybody was kind of complaining about it. Like every like one out of five videos is a TikTok shop video. They were pushing that in the algo for organic posts. They're now doing the same thing for live streams. So like live streams are getting a push and then they also have those campaign challenges that you can enlist in and they'll have their own hashtag. So say it's like hashtag summer sale or whatever. If you do your live stream and add that hashtag, you're going to get an extra push. So you'll get a ton of video or viewers like the first 10, 15 minutes. If you don't make a sale in the first 10 to 15 minutes, a lot of times those viewers will just like kind of slow down or disappear. But if you start making sales and like TikTok will keep sending you organic uh, viewers, if you're making sales, you're converting into good live stream because they're trying to get people into that mindset of buying from live streams. And then there's also the campaign type where you can send viewers to your live stream. I've heard some people having really good success with that. I can't really say. In general with live streams, it's like, you know, there's some really crappy qual quality ones that are still doing well because, again, it's so new and brands aren't on it. But the ones that are really crushing it, they have somebody's face in it. They're demonstrating the product in the background, like the product's being manufactured or something. There's something interesting happening in the background. So, like, the brands that are the most creative with it definitely need an in-house person that's getting an hourly. Like, nobody's doing a six-hour, 12-hour 
um, live on retainer if you haven't had success or on commission if you haven't had sex with it, success with it before. So definitely things that you have to think through and start setting up now before it becomes ultra competitive. One thing I wanted to add to that in terms of like who's doing this, there are like a couple agencies like TikTok Shop partner agencies that focus on live. Uh, a lot of them are very big in China and they just like opened up their arm here in the US and are focusing on live. And I don't know if you guys are familiar with sample centers, but it was this um, kind of initiative within TikTok shop that they were giving literally like rent money to agencies to go and get an office space and kind of make it kind of like a live studio where brands could send them samples and they would just go live. And I was talking to one of them that had a couple of really big clients. Uh, if you guys remember Anchor uh, that was crushing it with um, like electronics and chargers and headphones, uh, they were kind of doing those live streams for Anchor. And in terms of pricing, it was pretty crazy. It was like $300 an hour, minimum 10 hours you had to book with them. Um, so there are some, like, a lot of those big brands are working with some of these bigger agencies uh, that are doing some high production stuff. Uh, I was scrolling on my For You page and I saw Tart kind of doing this, like, game show uh, with live. So there have been, like, I don't think anyone's fully cracked it yet, but it's usually, like, either, as Zane said, high production or sometimes just, like, someone sitting there and showing the product and just talking. Uh, but it's kind of a... Uh, new initiative for everyone here in the US. I know with that as well, I know that TikTok are clamping down. I know there's like a, a little hack in terms of people doing that, this screenshot, and then obviously kind of running lives on that for like 24 hours. So they've definitely cut back on that. I've seen in a lot of uh, Discord channels and stuff like that. That is definitely a no-go now because obviously people are just like crushing it in terms of just like doing some ridiculous sales numbers from that side of things. So you can tell it's definitely a focus that they want in more quality rather than just quantity right now. So yeah, definitely watch this space. Yeah, for sure. I'm seeing a lot of brands, actually not that many that are doing lives yet, but I think it'll become a big thing. And I don't think that you need to overthink it if people are trying to test it out. It can be as simple as having somebody packing orders, answering questions as they come in. Like it can really be that simple because people watch for however long they watch if they're gonna buy or they're just trying to find the answer to their questions to end up making a decision. But I think it can kind of be pretty simple with that and then also thinking about like who's going to do it do you need like another agency to like get space maybe but i'm almost curious for like brands that are already doing well with certain creators maybe just have your top creators like go with the product to go live for a certain amount of time you know and test that and see what happens i mean i'm curious just to start tr just to start trying that um yeah. with your brands i i just kind of think if you test that with the creators that are well known for your product um it'll help those creators get more sales that day and over time. So I think it just kind of just benefits everybody involved to get involved with lives right now. It's, it's interesting for everyone knows we, we tried that as well. And I think like it goes back to that mentality that a lot of these creators are not business savvy and they're like, they like, they prefer to create a video that takes X amount of time and then trying to convert them to a live, they're not really into it. So yeah, I think it's still definitely the wild, wild west and not the norm at the moment. So yeah, it's definitely interesting to see how it's going to, develop even more in terms of that we're going to push lives and less videos so yeah let's see what happens so you want to add something here or you have your hand up for no reason okay so um with these lives now what you're saying i i have seen some people having success with it but i have to say like the correlation between lives and videos there's only a set amount of people that can do both. So I see some people doing very good with videos, do nothing with lives. Like they try to, but they the skill doesn't really transfer. And the other way around as well, where I have to say, I haven't tested the thing that you were saying, let's say somebody has a viral video the same day going live on the same product, seeing if kind of TikTok matches that traffic of the video and the live stream. I'm not sure about that. I guess that could work for sure. Um, but yeah, it's, it is, I haven't really seen people doing and good at lives and good at, at normal videos, like consistently, I haven't seen any people, at least in our community do that, or maybe one or two, but nothing uh, that I've seen more often, where I would say like people that make videos are normally very good at sales, they can also do the lives, but I haven't really seen that coming back till now at least. Yeah, I mean, I think the solution there is really to find your best creators. Like I think a little bit about like Tab Chocolate, like let's say whatever it was a year and a half ago, they had they did really well with a ton of creators and then they, like let's say they had around like 70 or 80 creators when you were working with them and then they went down to like seven. And that was before TikTok shop, but I kind of feel like it's just gonna be the same way now. You start out with thousands of affiliates, let's say hundreds get your product, a couple make really good content and you want them to stick around. Think about those people. I think that people in that space are typically 
charismatic enough and kind of talented enough as creators that they can be really good solutions to like hop on a live. That's kind of what I'm thinking. Yeah, true. And of course, everybody, as I think also other people here already mentioned, is just having these people on a retainer, uh, getting like, let's say four or five, six people doing them, letting, letting them do like a few hours of, of live streams every, uh, every week works as well. Uh, I have seen it. I think almost everybody here is now testing with it. Um, I'm not sure if anybody is already like in the next stage where they like have this up and running and see some results from it, but I would love to hear if anybody already has. We have a few lives. Like we have, we, we have one person on our team that's gone live for like a couple hours a week and they drove a few sales, but nothing crazy. And then we have a few creators uh, that have, that we've asked to go live and they've gone live and we have one or two that like, they were like live creators that then requested our product and started pushing it. One of them crushed it. One of them did like 8,000 sales, um, but it's very like sporadic. Um, <clears throat> I think that this like goes back to like the core conversation, which is like, I think there's kind of three angles of how I'm thinking about it, which is like or four angles, maybe, which is like wide net to curate and then collect the best influencers to work with them on a consistent basis in a more direct way and help them succeed. And then find live creators who are already performing well and get them to uh, and pay them a base plus have them start pushing. So that's the direction we're going now, as well as like uh, existing creators, like, like Noah was saying, existing creators who you know, could potentially do this well and want to give it a shot, pay them the same and then try that. And then also like you have to have a channel of talking to these people. So like me and Sam were really working on like building, you know, direct uh, conversation paths outside of TikTok that allow us to have like an ongoing conversation with these people and then even potentially with each other so they can help, uh, help each other in, in this capacity. And then like Sam was saying, there, there's a lot of TikTok partner live agencies and like TikTok will fund your uh will fund their agency to support your live process and they do stuff like giving you scripts and they the sets and like all this stuff so take uh sam reached out on behalf of breeze to TikTok to see if we can get funded for uh some of these agency partnerships so that's kind of like the next step on that front but i mean i don't think like my general gut on this stuff is like we're all going way too fucking slow like i feel like i i like I feel like we're ahead of the curve, but I think we're so fucking behind uh, when it comes to all this stuff. And like, I feel bad for anyone who's like actually not taking us seriously that's listening to this right now because like, guys, this is just fundamentally the future of the shit. Like, it's not even just the future of TikTok; it's the future of YouTube, and ultimately, it's gonna be the future of Facebook and Instagram. Like, it, it's all of it. So, uh, so like, uh, my yeah, my my focus with Sam right now is and, and with Hoffman is like. Uh, we're gonna uh, try to curate better retain relationships with creators, uh, continue to onboard them, start getting them into live, and then just work as closely as we can with TikTok to roll out the initiatives that they've already uh, found successful in other places. And I'm also like, I, I, I'm gonna start watching more YouTube videos about like what the fuck's happening in China. Because <laughs> like, uh, you know, you gotta remember it's like, the direction of the U.S. rollout is definitely being based on China, uh, not based on what well, like what the U.S. culture is. So, what does that mean? It's like whatever's working there is probably some semblance of what's coming here, no matter if we want it or not. And so that's uh, that's where I'm going to be leaning. Into. I think Yonki, uh, I'm not sure if I pronounced your name right, but Zane said he's uh, very familiar with the Chinese market. So uh, maybe if you can quickly introduce yourself and then also go over like kind of your thoughts on this whole uh, story. Yeah, for sure. Um, can everybody hear me? Yes, sir. Okay, great. Um, yeah, so thank you for the quick intro. Um, I actually work at one of the top, um, they're called MCNs here in China, uh, multi-channel networks. Um, and uh, I work for one of the largest ones in China. Currently, we have a few, um, I guess you call them influencers, content creators, uh, live streamers, especially. Um, and we've been doing live streams since 20, early 2020, 29, late 2019. Um, and we do it on multiple platforms as well. So it's not just Douyin, which is the Chinese version of TikTok. But we also do it on Taobao. Um, I guess you can compare it to Amazon in the States. And also Kuaishu, which is basically YouTube. So yeah, it's um, live stream is definitely coming to uh, the US market. Um, but in China, how they do their live streams, it's actually kind of um, a different version of live streams you currently see in the U.S. Where you would see, you guys should download Douyin and just hop on some of the live streams that's happening in China. 
Um, the bigger ones get around 100,000 uh, viewers every time they go live. And what they do in those programs is they actually plan it out very, very uh, detailed. Um, so they'll have like, we have like a whole team that only plans live streams. Um, and what they do is at the start, they have like a whole rhythm that you have to kind of um, try and fail and then see which what works. But in China, what works is um, they'll do giveaways. They'll have, let's say, 10 giveaways of iPhone 15s throughout the whole three-hour lives. And they'll give out giveaway iPhones every 30 minutes. Um, and then in between that, they'll sell products. And um, yeah, it's, just, it's really about the product selection, I would say, is one of the most important things that you have to consider when you go live. Um, you can't just go live and expect to sell whatever products lineup you have uh, just at a random sequence you have to really plan it out so yeah i guess product selection is one thing i would say um, we should focus on in the us um, and as for us we're also expanding in in the us and um, there's one program called uh, TikTok live creator network that you guys should look into um, whether you want to apply as a so when you apply you become a producer whether you want to apply for that program or not, that's kind of on you um, and what kind of resources resources you guys have. However, um, let's say you are an agency and you have brand partners and you have creators. What you can do is reach out to these producers to, to come and help you uh, set up the stage and basically produce your live sessions. Um, so that's one, one other thing that TikTok has just introduced um you guys should look into it as well uh besides that uh yeah we're so we're also coming into the u.s market we're gonna um have a few sessions in early june um with some um they're not they're not that big but they're kind of okay they're doing pretty well on tiktok shop currently uh we're gonna help them so but they do it in-house right so we're gonna come in and help them produce their live sessions uh, and then towards the end of June, um, with TikTok, um, we have bigger live stream events happening. Um, if you guys want to follow up on that, um, feel free to shoot me a message. I'd be happy to share some details with it about it. Um, I'm actually coming to my, myself to LA um, early next week. So if anyone's in LA, um, be happy to have a chat uh, in person. But at the end of the June, at the end of June, what we're going to do with TikTok is I have some celebrities join us um, and do some big live streams. And the goal TikTok has set is to uh, surpass $1 million in GMV per session. Um, so there's a lot of planning that goes behind these live sessions. And if you want to do well, you shouldn't do them like just, just, just to do them and go live because TikTok will just tank your viewership. Uh, if you want to do them correctly, you have to like really, really plan out a schedule, like a monthly schedule and go live once a week. That's how all the big um, live stream events goes in China. They plan it out ahead of times and then they promote it during, during, uh, before the lives. And yeah, when the live session actually happens, there's usually more than 50,000 viewers. If there's less than that, you're not doing that well. Um, yeah, I mean, it's it's pretty crazy, but um, yeah, I, I kind of just joined on the on, kind of uh, quickly here. But um, next time, I'd be sh I'd be happy to share some more details. But yeah, that's I won't I won't take up too much time today. Thank you. That's value. That's value. What you gave there, interesting. So you are working with kind of the with TikTok itself or with um, like a, a kind of similar company or how can I view it? Yeah, uh, you can actually look it up. So our our company is called You Want. Uh, it's spelled Y O W A N T. Uh, the chi the website right now is in is in Chinese. Um, we we are working on our US version of the website, uh, but we are essentially um, CAPs, right? In in the US, we do we also are CAPs in the US, but in China they don't have the CAP program. Um, it's a it's an entirely different thing that Doing has here. Um, but we're also like a talent agency at the same time where we have like major talents in China that are signed with us. Um, 
and some of them we incubated ourselves. So what, that's another thing that that um, uh, the U.S. market is kind of missing right now is incubating people, talent, content creators to become good live streamers. So that's one thing that um, I can I can yeah I can suggest you guys look into. Interesting. Man. Anybody has any questions? This is so much fucking. Yeah, dude, there's so much fucking value that I think it's hard for most of us to wrap our heads even around. But I'm going to try to recap and then maybe you can uh, clarify some points. So, like, essentially what I'm hearing you say, and this is kind of what Sam's been talking about as well. It's like uh, in <clears throat> in China and these other markets, you guys have uh, these networks, the, these talent agency companies, uh, and they're essentially incubating and fostering and scripting and producing live streams as well as uh, video content. But it sounds like mostly live streams. And that you're planning those out strategically once a week uh, and that you're running those uh, and promoting those. And it sounds like that those creators are pushing a lot of products, not specifically one specific product or one specific brand, and then iterating through that with a bunch of different brands and then lining that up with like more global events and opportunities. Can you fill in the holes? Yeah, that, yeah, right? you got it. Like we usually when, when we host an event, right, we prepare it at least a month ahead. Um, we'll have all the, our product selection ready um, a month ahead. And the products can come from sometimes, you know, one or two brands um, if we have like special uh, deals going on with them. Or, but usually it comes from, usually we have a selection of like 10 or even 20 brands. Um, and uh, yeah, that mean if you're an agency that that specializes in in um, live streaming or if you're a CAP uh, you shouldn't just focus on doing a live pushing a live stream for one brand you should focus on ex- like uh, how do I say this designing a program that would let you s- sell multiple products for multiple brands because a live stream session in China here it's like usually around three hours and if you only have one brand, you kind of have a limited set of products. So if you have, so what you want to do is keep people engaged during your lives, right? So you want to have multiple products. You can either like give away, do a flash deal with. Um, yeah, it's you can get, really get creative with it. It's fucking brilliant. I just sent you a new uh, message, man. I'm about to connect, uh, but like this is. This is what we should all be paying attention to. Like, this is where the whole fucking game goes. And so, out of curiosity, like, are videos and affiliates videos like still a, a, like a pretty big thing, or is it ex- pretty much exclusively live streams? Uh, honest opinion, I would say it's it's pretty much extinct. Extinct at this point. That's interesting. This is so fucking wild. That's interesting. Whoa. But yeah. So also on the live streams, uh, I have a video of New York Times. I guess it was like posted two, three days ago. Uh, I think Zayn I sent it to you. I also tweeted like here in, in a sec, but they were going to one of these agencies, I guess, uh, where they were doing the live streams and kind of showing how it is going. And they said all these owners of these agencies are indeed people from China kind of coming over to USA to host their sales and they're kind of already, their know-how. They come to USA and they're, they're hosting the exact same thing, thing now currently in USA. Yeah, I mean, um, it's actually crazy because last week we actually had um, the TikTok team in LA come visit us. Um, and we showed them around our studios, um, and yeah, we, we had a good talk with, about like the future of what TikTok is planning to do. And yeah, I mean, live stream is definitely one of their, uh, it's going to be a big chunk of their focus for the later half this year. That's interesting. I just, uh, posted to the video, by the way, if anybody wants to watch it, it's, it's very interesting to see where it is moving for me. The most interesting thing is, which I didn't expect to be honest is that live stream, I really thought it was something Asian. Okay, let's do the, let the Chinese, they, they do it, they would do it well. But in USA, I was never expecting it to be this big and, and this fast that they can just push it through their kind of throat and USA just kind of going along with it. Uh, I'm not sure if anybody in here kind of watches these things, but I have never really gone into one of these, but it's it's interesting. I don't think it's here yet. I think that's the point. It's like it's it's not like it's happening right now. It's like it's starting to, and we're kind of in the affiliate phase. But it seems like that China is accelerating. Like the path that we're on is a is a path that we like has already been played. So I think like the point here is like like it doesn't mean like change the script today. 
but it does mean like know where the game goes and start preparing accordingly. And kind of like the feedback I'm hearing is like that means curating strong relationships with creators, having them make videos ongoing, and starting to set up uh, plays to be successful and live, both for your brand and in, with individual creators. But it sounds like really like lining up with studios and getting your brand into the lineup of their studios for when they go live is really the play here too. Like kind of reminds me of like QVC. I don't know if any yes. yeah, Americans are here, like there used to be like shopping networks on TV. Like, you know, like you'd want your product to get on that shopping network. So that way you could be in the rotation and then move a bunch of products. So like, I'm kind of thinking to myself is like, I want to line up with, uh, Yuki or whoever else that has like existing fucking studios that are doing big live streams and they're going to do these celebrity. Like I want them to share breeze on their live stream. Not so much not like, and also do my own live streams, but really it sounds like partnering up with big networks and getting our products on their networks is just as valuable, if not more valuable than doing it ourselves. Yeah. One thing. We lost your same. Oh, can you hear me? Um, yeah. yeah, I was going to say one thing I'll add is like in the U.S., we're at least like a year or two away from like live picking up, in my opinion. And if you really look into like what happened in China is live really picked up for them in like 2020, like during COVID. Um, and that was just like how their consumer behavior kind of shifted. And I feel like that didn't really happen in the U.S. that much. And I feel like still in the u.s a vast majority of people are like search-based buyers where like they go and search for things that they want um compared to like discovery-based buyers where they like discover things and i think the whole idea behind social commerce is like pushing that discoverability that like amazon and like other search-based platforms don't really offer